Hello, uh, my name's Chad. I'm from the Holdridge location. I'm Ryan Johnson. I'm the CTS out of the Minden office. And uh, what we're going to go through here today is some uh, planter bar uh, adjustments and settings before we get started on a mounted planter. Like I said, we're going to do a video here on a mounted planter. And obviously we're hooked up already. But one thing I like to do before we even hook up is verify down on our tractor that the sway box are in. Um, that'll keep us, you know, from swaying side to side and it'll help our uh, guest rows. Um, it's much easier to do before you hook up. So just make sure they're there. You know, sometimes they've fallen off. Sometimes you take them out for other applications. So I'd say step one, do that. So moving into the next step beyond the sway blocks, we want to look closely at the levelness of the planter. And the importance of the levelness of the planter is that you can impact the placement of the seed by moving the seed uh, into the seed tube, as well as uh, impacting the way that the uh, knives enter the soil and also the, the uh, impact the closing wheels have on the seat trench. Ideally, when you go to go start your leveling process, you want to find a flat piece of ground as you can find and try to put yourself in a piece in uh, the actual seed rows, not necessarily the uh, headlands, but as flat as ground as you can find in pretty much your most typical planting scenario. Also, ideally, uh, especially if you have planter boxes instead of a CCS system, you probably want to have uh, at least quarter full seed boxes so that you have kind of a representative sample of how much weight you're going to have uh, as you move down the field. So you're not actually doing your leveling based on a completely full planter, which you're only going to have for about maybe five minutes of your operating time. As Ryan talked about, we want to get this planter bar leveled as our step first step. Um, what you'll do, is get ready to go. You're gonna drive forward probably 30 to 40 feet. You'll get out. Um, what Ryan's holding here is just a, an app on his smartphone that's got a level on it. That would work fine. Um, pull ahead. Uh, this bar we've already got fairly level, but let's say we're tilted too far forward. So to make those adjustments, we would go to the center link on the tractor and simply pick it up a little bit, spin our center link out a little bit, set it back down and drive back forward. Um, if it's tilted too far back, obviously we would um, use our center link to suck it in at that time. First thing we want to level is this 7x7 seven seven bar. I mean, that's what we're talking about when we're saying level. Once you've got your uh, planter actually leveled in the way you want it, uh, moving fr front to back, which is kind of the best, uh, best practice, is to go ahead and if you are running on super flat ground, go ahead and use this pin here to lock it in so that you have a consistent flat bar the whole way. Now, if you're in the event you're working with terraces or on an angle or anything of that nature, probably best to let these float a little bit, but there is the option to lock this in if you want to. You guys that just maybe updated planners to the, to the new DR um, 12, 16s, um, they do come with hydraulic wing downforce and there's a lock in here where they pivot and what that's going to do is that's going to put hydraulic pressure down so you will be able to eliminate your wing weights at that time. Customers that are currently running the older style bar that does not have hydraulic downforce on the wings, uh, generally we will take these four bolts out and we'll mount a set of uh, suitcase weights on there to uh, keep your wing down. Preferably three to four. Four is a good number to use, I believe. That practice is especially recommended in the event that you're running IRHD or individual row hydraulic downforce systems. Anything that's pushing especially into something like no-till or some very heavy soil, you're definitely gonna to wanna to, uh, kind of supplement your weight package here on the end. All right, so now that we move around the corner towards the back of the planter, we're coming to the point where the parallel arms are uh, gonna be our focus. Basically, the ideal is totally flat parallel arms. Now the likelihood of that actually occurring, probably not great, but if you got to choose between perfectly flat and slightly tipped up, slightly tipped up will do. Again, this is all kind of predicated by the levelness of the planter to begin with. So um, obviously we start with that facet right there. While we're in the business, we can also measure our length or distance from our uh, parallel arms to the ground. And as always, you want to have that in the 20 to 22 inch range so that you have a uh, good depth and, and good uh, contact there. All right, moving around the corner, we're now on to the depth gauge wheels. Uh, this is something that's very critical to start checking uh, right off the bat is air pressure on these tires. Uh, too often, I think guys just overlook that and it's a good practice, go through and make sure they're all aired up. 
and then uh, based on what you're seeing there with your parallel, parallel arms in terms of distance and whatnot, there are adjusting, uh, there are screws that you can make adjustments with here. Uh, you'll want to consult your operator's manual as to the exact process and number of threads you want involved there, but that is uh, where you would make that adjustment. While you're in the business of checking your air pressure and uh, adjusting the height if you need to, uh, it's a really good idea to check your bearings on these wheels. Uh, they tend to go out and uh, much easier to try to address that problem before you're actually in planting season. Another thing you want to check on your, on your planter gauge wheels, um, there'll be one with the tone wheel. And when I talk about the tone wheel, I'm talking about there's a tone wheel on the side with a sensor, and that tells you if the planter is moving or not. Um, so that'll, that'll actually tell it when we're moving that it'll go to active. Um, to adjust that, you want some float in there. So as you can see on this bolt right here, you'll want about two and three quarters of play in there. And so what that's gonna allow you to do is the tractor goes over a hill and the planter stays down and allow that wheel keep ground contact. So if you're having problems with uh, the planter stop and planting, that's a very good spot to come back and check and make sure you're getting direction of travel and this tire is not leaving the ground. So on this wheel, there's a sensor on the side that you need about 3 16 of an inch for it to read the, the tone wheel. Um, one thing I've had happen in the past is you go out to help a customer and we talk about checking wheel bearings. So we take this thing apart, we replace bearings, we put it back together, and then we forget to put that sensor in tight enough for it to read. All right, finally making your way to the very back of the planter. While you're back here, this is an excellent time to go ahead and check your uh, placement of your closing wheels. In particular, you're wanting to double check that uh, they're not actually compacting on top of the seed trench, but actually pushing it down along the side and that you're making sure that uh, they're not too loose or getting excessively worn. Uh, this is an excellent opportunity to see what the actual performance would look like in the field as opposed to uh, what you might think it looks like in the shop. Well, that's all we have for you today. If you have any questions on what we went through, uh, just contact your local landmark implement and one of the guys should be able to help you out.